when we developed this project, we were interested to moving our platform of CAR T-cell engineering with solid tumors. And then through a collaboration with Dr. Al Copeland in Florida, we decided to generate what we call TSHR CAR T-cell, which is basically a CAR T-cell that has a single chain variable fragment or their receptor is made out of the, um, it's made out to recognize the thyroid, thyroid stimulating hormone receptor or TSHR. And the reason why, first of all, the reason why we designed to target TSHR in particular is because one of the major limitations when you're working with CAR T cells and solid tumors is to finding the perfect antigen, a good antigen that is going to be mainly expressed in the tumor cells, but it's not going to be expressed on the healthy cells. So, and then after that, we need to work with the tumor heterogeneity and all the, the whole tumor microenvironment and also how do we can prevent antigen escape. So that was, um, I guess, one of the challenges when we started this project at the beginning, just finding the correct antigen that is solely expressed in thyroid cancers, but is not expressed in any other um, healthy tissues. And that's how we came up with TSHR. Um, and then we looked through the database and TSHR. There has been monoclonal antibodies directed against TSHR. There has been other work uh, with CAR T cell and TSHR. But what we decided to do is, because we're a translational lab, we decided to test this, uh, first of all, in human clinical samples. So we had this giant database that Mayo Clinic gave to us. And first, what we decided to do was to assess the expression of the TSHR um, receptor in samples from patients that have thyroid cancer. And we were very lucky enough to see that it was widely expressed in the different types of the subtypes of the thyroid cancers. So then based on that, we decided to generate our human TSHR CAR T cell. Um, and then after that, uh, we decided to test um, its effector functions, make sure that it was functional, make sure that it was killing and make sure that um, it was propagating and it was persistent. So up to the point um, our project was working, we were able to generate cell lines that express TSHR and we were able to test this TSHR CAR T cells. Um, however, in the context of our project, it's not that we're interested in thyroid cancers. We're actually interested in the most lethal form of thyroid cancers, which are considered the metastatic and the poorly differentiated thyroid cancers. And the biggest limitation is that when you're working with this type of tumor cells in patients, what we have seen is that they actually downregulate or limit the expression of TSHR. So that was a major challenge in our project because <clears throat> This could mean that if the tumor cells are able to downregulate TSHR, there could be a possible um, antigen escape from the CAR T cell therapy. And in order to overcome that major limitation, what we decided to do was, which we considered the second part of this project, was the introduction the introduction of the MAP kinase inhibitors. Here in particular, MEK inhibitors and BRAF inhibitors. And the reason why we did this is because going back again to our clinical samples we observed that, again, they do downregulate TSHR expression. And going through the literature, we found that um, the MAP kinase pathway is a very important pathway in the differentiation of thyroid cancer cells. And what we found is that other scientists have used this MEK and BRAF inhibitors to actually reverse that uh, the, um, the expression of some of these genes in the pathway in order to upregulate the expression of thyroid genes, such as TSHR. So that was kind of like the last piece in our project in order to overcome this resistance mechanism challenge. So what we did then was to introduce the, mech, um, the MAP kinase inhibitors into CAR T cell therapy and then figure it out if it was working or not. And for this, we had another challenge because now it's like, okay, we have our MEK and BREF inhibitors. Now we have to figure it out how we can develop a model we work and actually test this with the CAR T cell therapies. And what we did here is working with immunocompromised mice and PDX models that are very established in my lab, in Dr. Copeland's lab. We were first able to generate, um, uh, we were first able to um, infect mice with um, thyroid cancer cells that were TSHR is actually downregulated. And then we, that, we fed them with the MEK inhibitors. And then uh, what we saw is when we euthanized these mice, we collected the tissues and we were able to see the upregulation of the TSHR expression of these tissues. So this was very promising. So then based on this, we were like, okay, now we have a model that is, that is viable where we have seen this in vivo. Now let's combine it with our CAR T cells. And then first, of course, we moved to in vitro studies just to make sure that they're 
more than being functional, that they're not harmed by the addition of these MAP kinase inhibitors. And in our in vitro studies, none of these effector functions, such as killing, proliferation, degranulation, and cytokine production were affected in combination with the MAP kinase inhibitors. But the last part of this project was now to validate these results in vivo one more time. And this part of the project is, I think, where we are still kind of working and optimizing it. But what we started at the beginning was um, we did in vivo studies where we had a group of mice that were engrafted with um, with um, a, a, a thyroid tumor cells where TSHR was downregulated. And what we did here in particular, we had like two separate groups, like a group that were engrafted or injected with the tumor cells on day zero and then on day seven. And what we did is the group that were engrafted on day zero we started the treatment with the MAP kinase inhibitor. And then we stopped the treatment on day 10. And then the group that was engrafted on day seven we did not receive any treatment. So that was kind of like the control group, like no MAC inhibitors. So then what we did is that both groups on day 10, we randomized them according to the burden, according to tumor volume. And then after that, we administered CAR T cells. Uh, along with a negative control. And what we found over time is that this, what we call sequential treatment therapy, which was based first on the administration of the MAP kinase inhibitors, stopping them, following them by CAR T cell administration, result in improved anti-tumor activity. So, so far, this is where we are right now. This is very promising because again, we're interested in treating a very aggressive and lethal form of thyroid cancer where usually patients are not responsive to conventional therapy. Um, however, Right now, kind of like the challenges or uh, what we're facing right now is just trying to find um, in, in our in vivo studies uh, the correct assay where we're going to see the best effects either if it's in combination with the MAP kinase inhibitors and CAR T cell therapy altogether, or if we first have to administer the MAP kinase inhibitors and then stop and then add the CAR T cell therapy. And this is where we are so far right now.